Hey guys, Bay Area Aquatics here, coming at you with the long-awaited episode 5 of my Shallow Reef Build series. As you can see, a ton has changed since the last video I did on lighting. Fish in, coral in, rock, everything is in, and it's been going well for a couple weeks now. And I'm just going to give you guys a quick run-through of what's happening. So we're going to start with the fish. As you can see, I got a yellow tang. It's a little baby yellow tang and he's doing pretty good. I've got some people I've asked if I should be able to keep a yellow tang. A lot of people said yes, some people said no. I just went down to my own judgment. I thought I could keep it because the tank is five foot long and two foot deep, but um, a lot of people were worried about the depth. But in reality, the this guy won't get big enough to, for that to be a concern for a good couple of years. So, and I probably will have moved out by then so I think he's good for now he's eating pellets he eats mice shrimp and I'm giving him some of the Hikari pellets that have lots of um, greens and they're specifically designed for tangs and he's a very act this guy's a very active swimmer and overall cool fish we're gonna move over here to this little cave right here this is where everyone hangs out I have five disbar antheas. They're all kind of crammed in the cave over there. And the three of them school. Two of them are kind of concerning me. They're like pressed up against the rocks. They're not like breathing heavily or anything, but they are concerning me. I've had them for a couple weeks, and so I'm not too sure what's going on there. But you can see them kind of swimming around in there. Like, like this guy right here. Let me point at him. This guy's concerning me right here. He's just kind of like laid up on the rock. Um, so I got five of those guys, and then over here, I have a royal grandma. I'll put in some feeding footage of these guys so you can see them. You can, that guy's chilling out in the cave. And then, of course, I have my two clownfish. There's one, and there's the other. So that's it for the fish. So I'm going to show you guys my coral. Sorry the video is so blue. I can't really adjust any of the settings on my on this camera. But anyways, so uh, for right now, I have mostly LPS because... When I was doing the transition from my 40 gallon to this tank, um, a lot of my acros died for just because I wasn't keeping up on the water parameters of my holding tank. So I got a big old Duncan right here. If I can find my finger, there we go. So big old Duncan right here, four heads, um, about to be five. That guy's pretty big. Got a frog spawn, doing well. Um, branching hammer right there. Candy cane coral, and then a hydra right there. Panning over we have a favia right here which was receding starting to recede my old tank but right now it's getting it's like really puffy I've never seen it like that before so that's pretty cool and then right here I have an orange a can which is also um, getting really puffy too I mounted both of these corals and this this guy's starting to spread out on a rock on the other side of the tank I have my larger hammer this has this one right here has about three heads. It's just it's just getting bigger every day, which is pretty cool. I haven't um, started feeding them yet, just because I'm waiting for the tank to get established. Then I have a uh, Blastomusa right there. It has um, two large heads and two other smaller heads, and it's looking pretty puffy and nice. But unfortunately, it has some uh, bubble algae on the back. And then there's a Gal Galaxia or Galaxy coral right there. Um, a lot of, like half of it died out in the holding tank but the other half is staying strong it's on a super ugly like frag so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it I'm gonna try and like maybe break it off or something and then we pan over here we have my apostolopora which is doing pretty well I have some nice polyp extension on it which I haven't seen in a while there are some underparts that are bleached out and haven't come back so I might cut those off but it's doing pretty good I did mount all my corals um, hopefully getting encrusting or growth from that and then I also have like over here I got a little chalice and then I try to frag some of my god of war zoas and they're healing up nicely so there's three little heads over there so this is my overall aquascape that I've done using just a bunch of miscellaneous rock uh, that I've had and then I purchased some more reef saver rock from bulk reef supply I tried to make a three island look, but at the moment I have some like filler rock, so it kind of looks like just one big mass. I used some stuff by JB Will called Aqua Putty, I think that's what the name was, 
but it was curable underwater and mar it was marine safe and it was made for potable water so I figured it'd be perfect for a reef and I've had no problems so far I'll show you, you could probably see some joints right here I made a ton of bridges right here, there's a bridge right there and then I have a, another piece arching over so this, this piece right here is the middle um, island makes it's like a triangle shape and then over here I have that one big arch and then this other rock is attached to it and over here I just took this, this is one big rock, this is where my one anemone was on the other tank and then I just like glued it to that rock to for some support but I do have a bunch of just rocks hanging out in the back my Favia is on a random rock so you can't really see where they separate but I'm really pleased with this aquascape because this is my first time actually trying to make it look nice instead of uh, piling rocks on top of each other and there's lots and lots of caves because originally I was planning on getting two angelfish a coral beauty and a flame angel but I had I lost a coral beauty in quarantine because it had a um, ache and fi um, some other internal stuff so I kinda got discouraged on that I don't want to lose any more fish so I'm gonna stick with a flame angel for now but I'm gonna get him in the future and there's still plenty of space for lots of different fish so right now we're taking a look at my sump which has everything in it we're gonna this for anyone who is new I'm going to start from the beginning. This is the drain chamber. I have a bean animal overflow, so there's three drains. Um, this one, as you can see, is the full siphon, which has some air trapped in it right now. This is a very high flow area, so there's no de really debris in there. And it, basically the water comes back up and goes into the filter socks, which I made a little holder for. And they're getting nice and full of gunk, which I need to change them out soon. And then they go in the main chamber, which I have some live rock. Um, that's a frag rack, has some coralline, I didn't want to move it. Um, sponge filter from the old system, has my protein skimmer, which is disgusting right now. It's like really, really black, I need to change it out. So that's doing really well, actually. It smells terrible. And then I have um, a carbon reactor right there, which is plumbed into the return. And then there's like a little bubble trap and it comes back here. I have uh, my two probes for, for the reef keeper and my line for the auto top off. There's my, uh, my rig I made for the top off. The float switch is actually not working right now. So I'm going to have to try and fix that because it says open even when it's in the closed position. And I made a little thing for the Tom's aqua lift right here. Basically the return pump returns it right here through this manifold, splits off over there that goes to the tank through a switching current water director and then into the tank and then part of it goes to the reactor just a little bit of flow right there and then the other half goes to my refugium which there's some lock line and there you can't really see it too well but it goes to my refugium with some low flow I have a little T8 shop light on it, dual T8 lighting it and you can see I have two different kinds of algae, uh, catamorpha and then calerpera, I believe that's what it is. There's one strand there, and then I have a larger chunk over here. A huge mass of it, it's growing like crazy. You can see all sorts of shoots just popping off, and there's some rock in there too. And yeah, that's refugium, it's 55 gallons refugium, 55 gallon sump, with a, and then a part of it is divided into a 10 gallon uh, auto top off reservoir. So that's the filtration and then here's my returns, two of them. And then you can see the squid back there plumbed in with a check valve. Goes off to two. And then there's the just standard bean animal overflow. And so, and then I also have, for flow I have two JBO WP25s. So additional so additional equipment would be the reef keeper, as I showed you. This is just the um, the standard mod, um, standard, not the elite, and it has two power bars and it controls the auto top off and lighting and all of that good stuff. And then I showed this in my last video, but I have my lighting up here, which is two 250 watt metal halides. They're on little sliding rails, and I wanted to ask you guys a question because these things are very, very, very bright and very hot in my small room. 
use up a lot of electricity, etc. I was thinking about going back to LEDs, the little uh, cheap value fixtures that I had before, and they're cheaper than they used to be when I bought them for the 40 gallon. But my question was whether or not I should go with two fixtures or three, because they're about the same size as the halides, the LED fixtures. Um, but yeah, I I was wondering um, if I should get two or three, because I'm not sure if they have the same spread as a halide. But so if you could tell me what you think in the comments about that. So that's about it, guys. That's the this is the final build video of this shallow reef series episode five um, from now on I'm just gonna be doing regular updates of this tank and I'm gonna I have a couple new projects planned for uh, like a water change mixing barrel and stuff like that and I'll, sh I'll just keep you guys up to date on what's happening I'm also setting up a new tank for a client of mine which it just is a uh, my dad's friend and I'm setting up a new saltwater reef for him so I'll try and do videos on that but anyways this is my 62 gallon shallow reef tank and that's about it any questions please leave them in the comments below don't forget to subscribe like the video etc etc thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time